It's a happy day for the boys today. They're out there painting. It is supposed to get up to almost 50 today. So warm enough to paint, warm enough to let it dry. They're hoping to be able to get the whole thing painted today and then if they have to do a touch-up coat tomorrow, they can do a touch-up coat and work on the wiring. I thought I'd give you guys all an update. Trey and I went and got his deck wood at Menards the other day. Like 863 a 10 foot board plus 11% rebate. And he decided to pick himself up a hand winch. And this particular hand winch has the crank on top. It's about a $32 Harbor Freight special because he wants to mount it right on the deck and with it being the way it is like that he doesn't have to have a bracket or anything and he can use it to haul up uh, any dead riding lawnmower tractors or anything like that or small tractors you could probably fit a little ford on here so it's a two-ton hand crank and what's your wheels huh? your your weight limit oh, one ton Okay, 1500 for the whole trailer. Body's stronger now because the metal is <laughs> stronger. Well, it's coming along. They're having a good time of it. It didn't get as warm today as they thought they would, so they're just kind of fiddling around with it. He'll get back to his wiring and start working with his fasteners. We'll show you those uh, when he starts drilling. So this is what we picked up to do the deck boards, and it is... Um, a Torx head and hex head so you can use your nut driver. That wood is soft enough that these will go down in it. He's thinking he might pre-drill, but this is pretty aggressive. Um, the only self-tapper that they had like this um, was Phillips head or a Torx head, and it had a slightly bigger head. These were on clearance at Lowe's for $3 a pack. And it is a lot. The two packs. 56. 56 screws. And we need 100 screws without doing any um, stake sides or removable sides for it. Uh, he's thinking he was um, maybe going to do two boards at the bottom and one up high later. And three boards total. So we have to get about five more lengths of board. And we might need a few more of these screws. And we were by Harbor Freight for his uh, winch. So we went ahead and picked up reflective strips just to make sure that we had that and deck it out and make it look nice. So it's going to look like a new trailer. And when we picked these up at Lowe's, we saw they are wanting $2,000 for a trailer similar to what we are building. So I think that's pretty good. Um, we've got a running tally right now for our spending. So here's where we're at with our tally for Trey's trailer. The wood and the D-ring anchors we picked up in one trip, and it was just about $95. Now, there was also an 11% rebate going on, so that is also going to come off of that as well. The spare tire is in addition to the parts, so it's not really part of the trailer rebuild, but we did put it on, $60. His winch was $35. Um, that was... Uh, not including the same trip we picked up the reflective strips, so we added that at the bottom. I had to double check the receipt. Six dollars in the deck board screws. The light kit was twenty-five dollars after the eleven percent rebate at Menards as well, and they used less than a quart of paint, so I just wrote down the the whole quart for fifteen dollars. We are at two hundred and forty-two dollars from what was a scrap trailer.
So I'll show you real quick up close what the boys uh, did with the deck. They laid um, the boards down and clamped them together and they did pre-drilling through the wood to get into the metal, but they didn't do a countersink. This wood is pretty wet and soft when you pick it up. We actually had uh, ice in ours from the constant snowing and being shipped during the winter. So those hex heads sink right down into it and they bite so good when you can run it with one of those star bits or with a nut driver. So they're attached real good. It's not going anywhere and it's nice and tight. So Trey and I are working on the reflective tape or your DOT stickers. Some people call them conspicuosity stickers. Um, it's basically reflective tape. And this trailer originally had, you see that little dimple here, there was a hole here and here for a side marker light. Normally there'd be like a yellow light there. Um, the strips are half white, half red. So we've got them laid out on the trailer where we wanna put them. Um, we, it's a 10 pack, we have more than we're gonna need, but I wanna make sure that if we ever don't have the lights, that any oncoming traffic, you know, if we were going through an intersection, would have that benefit of the reflective tape on the sides to see us, not just like the car light or anything. And I noticed coming home in a heavy rain one time, I was real grateful for trailers having these reflective lights because a lot of times trailer lights do have trouble. Um, so we're gonna load this up with probably eight stickers. And about the trailer wiring, he said it's real straightforward and simple. We are going to add some of that uh, heat shrink over these. But he's got it all zip tied right to the frame. It was real straightforward. And then it just comes here through the front. We're going to add a zip tie here just to make sure that this is never dragging on the ground. Once it's hooked to the car, it wouldn't anyway but just an extra little thing that I request. So since we put in new metal in a lot of places, um, this back section, we didn't, but it's a little bit skinny. We went ahead and trimmed off some of the excess to make sure that that's not wrapping under. That'll make a weak spot. If you don't get a good bond the first time, uh, it's not gonna be real great. It's pretty warm today in the 50s and it's going to be a little warmer every day um, leading up into 70. So these should stick really good. We didn't want to do it when it was cold, so we kind of held off on it. And of course, we're just staying clear of the welds, like I said. There was some excess metal here from something, and we didn't grind that off. So he's just trimming the ends to make it fit. But you can see here, we split one in half right on the color difference line so that it would be serving as our side marker light. And the same thing here. And that's what we're going to do over here. You're doing a good job. So we came up with an idea of whether um, to test whether we wanted reflective uh, tape on the tongue or not. We grabbed a couple of refrigerator magnets, flip it around. They might be a little weak. I meant flip the magnet over. There. So this way we can step back and see if we think that that's necessary or not. We don't want to sticker it up too much, but we definitely want to be seen and to help ourselves so that we don't walk into it. And we decided to go ahead and stick two on the front. That way if it's ever sitting not hooked up, um, no one's going to back into it if it's parked uh, in the side yard or anything. Hmm. 
Let me know down in the comments below if you think it needs one on the hitch or not, just for walking around the yard safety, stepping over the tongue, and we'll decide about it. So Trey's decided that they want to keep the winch um, mobile instead of mounting it into the trailer deck stationary. And that's the reason we got the top crank one. Um, because the trailer tilts, you can't um, really do so well with the ratchet crank um, where it's mounted on the side. So they've came up with this. They are, can you see that? They've mounted it through the bottom with some carriage bolts. Show us how it's going to work. There you go. And then he can set a block underneath it if it needs to to get a trailer on, a tractor on to this or anything else that he's winching up. And then pull it out and put it away instead of having like a little doghouse built on it. It'll make it last a lot longer. So now the next thing we're going to do is we got these uh, anchor uh, D-rings. He's going to figure out where he wants to put these. That way if he has the sides on, if he can't use the grab bar here or the side stake pockets, then he's got a spot for tie downs as well. Side of the board where the holes are. Where okay. So he's got his D anchor rings all marked out where he's going to put them. That way, lots of tie down options, whether or not he's hauling something big, something to consider. This is about six foot wide, right? Uh, five. Five. You want to have them far enough out that if you're hauling like drywall that would get damaged, four by eight boards, that they're off to the side of that so that you're not going to damage anything sliding in any pieces because he's putting these in with screws they're not gonna you know be something he's gonna take out later on he could nice job nice and tight he does it nice and slow. Um, he's marking it. You can see here. It doesn't look like he had the other one done. He marked right in the hole where he wanted it to make sure he's right on his measurements. Good job. So Trey and I got to go pick up some straw for a hay delivery. He's going to hook this up and we're going to do our first test run.
So the trailer build is complete. It easily held 33 bales this way. I could keep going. Trey was actually worried about the weight on the trailer. The tires aren't even squatting and the car isn't even squatting because it's really taken a lot of that weight right in the center. You can see I started to stack high and thought, oh yeah, I better listen to him. It's just our trial run. So we tested it out, 33 bales of straw. Straw is lighter than hay, so keep that in mind. But real easily, stacks of, um, a base stack of three going up, 15, 12, and I got like six on the back. So it is a good size for hay and straw bales. It's gonna make our summer deliveries really easy. Distance wise, having suspension, I got springs here. The cart that we used to use had nothing. And the previous cart was built with just an old axle from like a Model A or a Model T, and it has ag tires, so we couldn't go as fast or as heavily loaded. We'll still use it around the farm for wood as we had intended to use it, and this is going to be the road trailer. Remember, give your kids tools, get them active, get them busy on building and fabricating, and these will be life skills that they will have forever. I'm super proud of Trey. I so thank him for doing this for us. It looks fantastic. Give him a like, give him a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.